So the administrators, the teachers, Father, the various school districts, that they can go and get the education that they need, Father, and have peace of mind and be in safety in Jesus' name. We give you glory for each and every aspect, Father God, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, thank you. We glorify you. We exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. To God be the glory. We're so glad that you are here today. The Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever to every generation. And so I am a second and first, second and third generation person who believes in transferring information and knowledge so that God's people can be established in the covenant and the promises of God so that they can grow in the things of God. Every generation needs to know about the Lord. And so I don't take this responsibility lightly. So the vision of Vegas Christian Center is to bam, to, to build, build advance, advance and, and manifest the, the kingdom of God in the life of God's creation, creation living in, in Las Vegas, Vegas the, the nation and the world. world. We are located at 3465 West Craig Road, Suite B as in Boy, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89032, at the rear of the Northern Vistas Business Park. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 751615, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. Our phone number is 702-518-2822. That's 702-518-2822. You can support the ministry at paypal.me slash vccbam. That's paypal.me slash vccbam. Hallelujah. Glory. And if there are any birthdays out there today to next Saturday, I'd like to wish a happy birthday day, week, and month. And if there are any anniversaries out there, I'd like to wish you a happy anniversary day, week, and month. And we thank you, Miss Gill. You are healed and whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And we are so glad to see you back. Hallelujah. Amen. We agree amen. with every Yes, amen in Jesus' name. Hell. We're so glad that everybody is here today. Yes. We praise God for you. Uh, we can't do this alone. We can't do this without you. We need your prayer support because we're believing that next year in 2023, I said believing. That's right. Believing. To believe does not mean that it will happen, not happen, but our faith is on the line for what we need to do to advance the kingdom of God because we want to move out of this lo particular location uh, into something that's a little more, I don't know, I don't know if it Conducive to our needs. Conducive to our needs. Very good. That's a good way to say that. <laughs> Amen. And uh, so... <laughs> So we're happy that you're here, and we praise God for you. And uh, invite, tell, share, bring people, invite them to come on out to the ministry so that they can receive the teaching of God's word and grow thereby. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that the interest of your word will bring light, clarity of thought, and understanding to the heart, mind, and souls of the hearers. I decrease so that your spirit within me would increase, and I ask that you think through our minds and speak through our lips. Help us to articulate information and knowledge so that your people can be strengthened edified, encouraged, and instructed in righteousness. We covered earnestly that the best gifts of the Spirit are in operation to minister and to meet the needs of your people. Satan, we remind you that your power is broken, rendered null and void. You cannot come in to kill, steal, destroy, nor pluck up the seeds of God's word, which will be planted into the hearts of the people. I break and cancel every assignment using my authority. And Father, for it all, I promise, we promise to give you all the praise and thanksgiving, the honor and the glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, so we will, um, the reason why uh, we, uh, we will be receiving communion today, for those of you that are watching, make sure you get you some juice and some crackers or something like that, so that when we get down to that portion of the service at the end, you'll be able to participate in that. So uh, again, to our viewing audience, we want to thank you for watching and listening in. How did I get to where I am today? I got here to, in terms of, I'm talking about the teaching aspects of, of why God has led me over here to Hosea. There are different places in the Bible, sometimes in the Old Testament, sometimes in the New Testament, I find myself drifting towards, and so I'm in the Old Testament right now so that we can learn from a historical perspective what was happening with the children of Israel so that we can grow in the things of God. And um, uh, 
Hosea chapter 4, it, uh, it's a, this is a, a very um, many times quoted passage of scripture, but we don't always quote the entire passage. We just quote the first part of the passage. Okay, Hosea chapter 4. And Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, and we quote this many times. It says, "My pe and many of you could probably finish this sentence. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Okay? So we've heard that quoted, and many times that's where we stop. Amen. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But we don't hear the entire context of that particular passage to know why they were being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the word of God tells us why. 4-6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, if I put emphasis on different words in here, it's going to have different meaning. So I don't. I got to be careful not to put the emphasis on any one particular word because it says, "Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me." So who is he talking to? Oh, is everybody there? Mm -hmm. Who's who is who is Hosea talking about? The priest. This is what God saw. Hosea is a prophet. A prophet is a seer. A prophet looks out amongst the people. He looks out amongst the community. He looks out among the country, the nation, and the city. He looks out amongst the churches. He looks out amongst what he sees happening in the world and society all around. They look. They observe. They seers. That's what they're called. They see. They look. They perceive. And when you see things happening, and I always ask this question, what do you see? Because many times when you ask that question, what do you see? It's a reflection of the fruit in a person's life. What do you see? The fruit that shows up in a person's life is a reflection of who they are in their heart. What do you see? So if you see a person acting like a jack, then what do you see? So that's what's happening on, you know, when you see things happening in our world and in society, you can make some judgment calls about what's going on. You don't need to have a prophet, thus saith the Lord, when all you got to do is open your eyes and look and pay attention to what you see. So don't be caught sleepwalking. He says, because you have rejected knowledge, because you have, uh, he says, uh, here I am. Okay. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me. So I, this is how I got here. I was like, Lord, what's going on? And I was, uh, this concept, I was still, this is like right after, you know, when things kind of really, really, really started opening up this year, you know, around the beginning of the year. He says, and this guy started asking me this question. He says, are you going to, in the midst of the pandemic, he says, are you going to stand? You got to be able to stand in the midst of whatever that whatever that quote pandemic is in your life that shows up, because we all have a universal experience, and that universal experience is the effects of what th this pandemic, right? Okay, so that's a universal experience. So we have a shared shared experience, and so the question would be: are, In the midst of that, are you going to stand? And if you are going to stand, do you know how to stand? And then God says, the reason why people are not standing and they're falling is because they don't have knowledge of God. They don't have knowledge of God's precepts. They don't have God. They don't have the knowledge of God working in their life to help them overcome the sickness and disease, to help them overcome what are the things that they need to be doing concerning their salvation, concerning understanding what salvation is, what healing is, what Jesus has made available to us. They don't understand. So people are falling, dropping like flies. It's, it's like what the and Christian folks not coming to church Christian folks not tuning in Christ, Christians <laughs> the, the, the ones that say they love God the ones that say they love God the most huh supposedly mm, okay. falling by the wayside Folks, folks abandoning their calling, abandoning what, what they've been called to do to preach and to teach the word. And people fell off. All because of a circumstance, a universal circumstance. And God says the reason why they've fallen off, fallen by the wayside is because they don't, they don't have knowledge. That's what he said. He said because 
He says, we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. So that meant, I see the fruit of it, which means they were rejecting God's knowledge and God's word before. What, what's interesting about that is the fact that they were rejecting the knowledge, which meant they had the ability to receive God's knowledge. They had the opportunity to receive it, but they made a choice. So what I encourage everybody is just be aware of the choices that you make. Make sure your choices line up with your heart of hearts and your heart of hearts lining up with the word of God. They chose to reject knowledge. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me. So now you're getting kicked out of your job, out of your assignment. And then he goes on to say, because, another because. Everybody has a because for whatever in life. Everyone has a because. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, his statutes, his precepts. You forgot those things. He says, I will also forget your children. So we're talking about generational information, generations of information. When one generation grew up and did not know God, then the, that generation suffers. And then many times, if you read through scriptures, many times the children of Israel, one king, one priest, one prophet or whoever loved God, and then the people did what they were supposed to do. They transferred the information and knowledge. And then another generation grew up and they forgot God. And because of that, they went into captivity or they went into all these different bad things. It's a cycle. It's over. It's cyclical. And because it's a cycle, that means I, as a pastor, I don't want to sit in a position of leadership as like these priests. And God said, because you didn't teach the people and give them what, what they needed to hear, that God going to forget you. he said your children see I if I and I'm using that as a metaphor children are people that you influence people children that 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 grow up under your tutelage that are in your family they're your children and then you go and have children so it's duplicatable and I don't want your kids or your sphere of influences to be forgotten because I didn't do what I was supposed to do so I give you what you need so that you can give, in turn, give what, to them what they need so that we can keep this thing going until Jesus comes back. That's the key. And that's the same principle as you're getting information, you're getting knowledge. This is the information highway time span. So it's so much information out there, a podcast, listening to us, going to the websites and all that kind of thing. Don't choose to reject the knowledge. Hear what's being said. Ask God, how will this information impact me as an individual? What do I need to take from it? How do I use it? Do not choose to reject knowledge. So we're talking about knowledge. We started off with knowledge to stand, and we went over talking about over in Ephesians that, you know, after having done all to stand. See, there are various things. There's so many different things that we have to have knowledge about. I'm, I'm operating from a lens of 35 years. Has it been 35 years? Of what? Um, 35 years of what? I got married in 87. Oh, yeah. Then that I came into the things of God in 1981, so I didn't really get into the ministry part until we actually got married. So how long have we been married? 35, 35. years? Okay. I've been doing this for 35 years. So I'm operating from a lens of 35 years of experience of in being in the word, teaching the word. Um, I don't know everything about the word. I'd never profess that. Things that I've learned, things that I've experienced, books that I've read. So I'm operating from a different lens. So when you get new people that are either growing up in the things of God or new people that are coming along in the things of God that, that don't have that 35 year experience, I got it. How do we catch them up? How are they going to get caught up? Because I just can't. If uh, uh, That's why many times I think many places you go get a teaching and it's just a salvation message every single week. Get saved, get saved, get saved, get saved. Salvation messages. Nothing wrong with salvation messages. But I need something that's going to take me beyond my salvation message. How do I live now? 
Okay, I'm saved. I said, yeah. I raised my hand and said, Jesus, come to my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I'm born again. Now what? How do I begin to, how do I live my life now? How do I walk by faith? Walk by faith, not by sight. What does that even mean? A generation of people trying to come along and things of God. They don't know what that means. They don't understand, okay, how do I get into praise and worship? What's the reason behind why I praise and worship God? What's the reason why behind why I pray? And so we got a generation of kids that have where they they rode on their mamas and daddies' faith coattails over the years, and now they are coming into their own, and they don't have these kinds of experiences of the knowledge of God so that they won't be forgotten. That's, that's what I see. So I don't want any, so we're talking about knowledge of salvation right now. And as I was thinking about this this morning, what comes to mind is one of the statements um, in our vision statement is to, uh, or rather not one of our statements, but we want to be able to give people vision. That's revelation, perception, understanding, so that they can see what it is that God needs for them to see so they can see themselves the way God sees them, all right? And so there's so many different things, so, so diverse. So we're just talking about one element now, and that's salvation. So when we talk about just this one element of salvation, that's, that has to be broken down because a lot of times people think, oh, I got saved. What does that even mean? I miss hell and go to heaven. That's all they, that's all they, that's the mindset. I don't go to hell. I get to go to heaven. I said, I, okay, so how do I live my life? Based on my salvation. And last week we used, we used the illustration of the umbrella. Remember that? And so the umbrella was the symbol, symbolism of the umbrella is the covering, the, the, the covenant that we have in God. That's a whole other word that we have to have knowledge and understanding in. So we're just talking about one element. That element is salvation. And salvation can be broken down into deliverance, safety, soundness, preservation, healing, and prosperity for every area of your life. Every one of those words has to be broken down. Because I could tell you deliverance, but and then you say, oh, yeah, I'm delivered. And then you get up out of here, and you, they still go back to their drug habit. Oh, yeah, I'm delivered. And then they still get up and walk out the door, and they still lie. I'm delivered. And they get up and go walk out the door out the door and they still have ornery angry attitudes don't even understand what they mean what it means to say I'm delivered or to say safety I have safety what does that even mean safety from what well I'm walking down the street and I'm scared every time I turn around look over my shoulder somebody behind me I have fears worries things like that D not realizing or understanding that because I keep my trust in God, I don't have to be afraid. See, I have to. It's choice, like Cheryl said. It's choice. We choose. But if I don't understand that I have something bigger and better working on the inside of me, the power of God and my Heavenly Father, because I trust God, because I believe God, because I stand on His Word, because I'm trusting His Word, because He's not going to let anything happen to me in the name of Jesus. Pandemics or not, God will not let anything happen to me. Why? Because I believe how He operates. I believe how He conducted life back then. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means He has to be like He was faithful to the children of Israel, he has to be faithful to me. So when the pandemic hit, what did I do? I, I did what I, uh, I taught people and said what the word of God said. I said, you better go home and apply the blood of Jesus. Because the, anything that where the blood is spread, the death angel and everything associated with death has to pass over. So that's been my prayer for y'all. Why? Because I want you safe. That's what he said. That's a part of my salvation package. I want you to be safe. And praise God, many of you weathered everything that came through with, you know, every, you know people got, even, even my wife and I, we went the whole time and didn't contract anything to deal with the pandemic. Not until this year. COVID. What? And we did everything we were supposed to do. Wash your hands, wear face masks, did everything you're supposed to do. All to you, folks getting sick. All sickness going on all around. We're in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Not us in Jesus' name. And then what happens when it does hit, guess what? It won't take me out. It won't take me down. But why? Because I understand the power of the blood. I understand that. See, it's a lot of people don't understand that. They're walking around in fear, walking around afraid. People, gas prices doing what they're doing. The government doing what they do. Folks being killed, murders, and people ain't saying a word. And uh, wars and stuff going on in our world. Global warming, you know, they're talking about, you, did, have, did you see the latest news about the heat? Okay. The, the positioning of where heat is located now, it's expanding. It used to be just at the equator, you get a lot of heat. I like weather stuff. I would have probably been a weatherman had I not. <laughs> had I not, I would have been a real nerd. <laughs> I mean, not that weathermen are nerds. They're pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> you cleaned that up real nice. <laughs> but I probably would have been a weatherman had I not gotten to doing this. And uh, anyway, praise the Lord. Psalm 91. <laughs> okay. Psalm 91. We already talked about the first part of it. And we did the little brief Bible study on it. Okay. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I will trust. See, that's what you say. This, this helps you to get a perception about your relationship with God. You got to tell, you got to say it. I will trust God. In the midst of whatever's going on in my life, I will trust the Lord. I will I thank you, Father God, for victory. Thank you, Father. I'm kept safe in this fortress. I am protected by the authority and power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Verse 3. He says, Surely he shall deliver you. What? Now he tells me I'm delivered. So you have deliverance. Right now. It's not that you're trying to get to get to a place of deliverance. God is saying, you are. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence is coronavirus. Monkey pox. I don't care how you got it. It's still a pestilence. Anything that, that is a pestilence, diseases, because they're so pestilence are teeny, you can't see them. They're so small. They're germs and viruses that are in the atmosphere. It's already here. Monkeypox ain't nothing new. <laughs> it's not. It's all, it was already here. Why? Because sin is here. Sickness and disease is already here. But when you have, like my umbrella, if you have the covenant of God protecting you, hovering over you, then you can be kept safe from all of that stuff. And then be, Why? Because I'm going to make decisions that agree with what the word of God says. I'm going to go ahead. And then part of that, you got to be willing to realize you have a covenant with God and you want to walk in the coverings of God. So when we used that umbrella example last week, that represented the covenant and the issues that were going around. The issues still go around, but they don't have that impact on our lives because we have the covenant. You have to realize that you have the covenant of God right this very second. And if you choose to walk in it, please do because you have it. It's already been given to you. Some people don't want to acknowledge that God is their covering, that God has got their back. God's got your back. You have to realize that and walk in that and enjoy that. There's a phrase, misery loves company. Be aware of those individuals that are out there that will try to pull you out from up under your covering because that is not where you want to be. You want to stay under the covering of God. That's where the blessings are. That's where all the blessings flow. Don't you want to go where, where the blessings are? Well, I'm going to say it like this. I want to go where the blessings are. I want uh, w the blessings to be overtaking me. I'm walking around and, ooh, slapped on the head. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was a blessing. Oh, oh, my God, another one. That's all right. All the blessings just attacking me. And then... What, do, what does it say? I am blessed to be a blessing. So I take my blessing, didn't hear my blessing, did that, and I go share with somebody else. That's, a, that's important. You, you, amen. So he says, surely he would deliver you from the snare of the fowler. We're in Psalm 91. 
uh, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. His truth, not your truth, not society's truth, not social media's truth, not the government's truth. Those those places, those, those ways of thought and thinking go contrary to the word of God. And you got to be able to understand that and perceive that and get the benefits from it, from the word of God working in your life. Because social media will tell you one thing, the, the news will tell you something else, your government will tell you something else, and all these different things will tell you something different. And God's like, you better get the truth. And you better, see, but when you have the word of God working in your life, it gives you discernment so you can recognize truth. Amen. Because his word is truth. And you have a spirit man that lives on the inside of you who knows how to recognize truth when you hear it. But many times, once we hear that truth, our eyes, our ears, what we touch, what we see, our senses will sometimes be diametrically opposed to truth. It's like, I don't want to hear that. Why we, what? I don't need that. Why do, I, why do I need that? And then we, then we start pursuing what we want and what we want to do and how we feel and what I think in my opinion and God's like you need to go sit down somewhere and just shut your mouth right. okay praise the Lord <laughs> you, that's, that's what it's like go sit down somewhere and chill out why because he says he already told us his people were destroyed for a lack of knowledge that means you better get some knowledge that means you got to learn how to replace those old ways of thinking, those old attitudes, those old perspectives, those old ways of doing things and how you conduct your life and how you run your life. How has running your own life, how has that worked out for you so far? Right. And God's like, you better get on my plan. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I sent Pastor Everidge to tell you. He gonna tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help him God. That's true, I am. I'm going to tell you what needs to be said. I'm going to say it. If, I might hurt your feelings in the process of saying it, but guess what? I'd rather your feelings be hurt than you for not to, have, to not have truth working in your life. I'm not intending to hurt nobody's feelings. It's not my, that's not, what, what good does that do me to hurt somebody's feelings? But if it helps you to, you know, to arrest your attention and to get you on point for doing what you need to do, why? Because God's got a work and a job that needs to be done here in the earth realm. And he needs you to be on his team. You can't be on God's team and you you playing football. Football season about to start back up, right? You on God's team, and you know you 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 playing you on offense. Okay, that means you got the ball, and you, the quarterback decide he's gonna throw the ball to you, and you go run the other direction. Wait, 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 we going this way, and you you get the ball and you start running that way. That's what it looks like in God's kingdom. When people don't get on, get on board for God's plan. Because he's the one that's calling the plays. All right, just have to throw this little tidbit in. In <laughs> reference to, you know I'm going to say, in reference to feelings, because I come from a, a psychological background, in reference to feelings, nobody can hurt your feelings unless you allow it. So we, if you allow somebody to hurt your feelings, you're giving them that power over you. So just be aware that if a hurt feeling pop up, you have allowed that to transpire and just be aware, why am I allowing Billy Bob and Susie Lou to hurt my feelings? What's going on? What's really going on there? So I just had to say that. And every time you say that, I always ask you, who is Billy Bob and Susie Lou? <laughs> Those are my makeup names. Yeah, she made up those names. Okay. Those are issues of life. The Billy Bobs and the Susie Lou's. 
in your life that you allow to dictate how you're going to govern your life. Okay, praise the Lord. Yeah. It's real quiet in here. That's okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Verse 5, you shall not you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. I remember one night when we lived in L.A., and uh, my kids know this one. We were uh, just in the house enjoying our life and everything. And then next thing you know, because we, we lived in the hood. Well, we lived in several hoods. <laughs> <laughs> this was over on Western. And if you know L.A., uh, what was that? 91st and Western, over by St. Andrew's Park. And boy, that's the middle of one of them groups, one of them gangs. It's the heart of where one of those gangs was located. And uh, we lived in this apartment building. We owned the apartment building. So we had one of the back units. We were living there. And uh, uh, one night, we had, and so we're my, it's, it's, and then next door is another apartment building. And so at this next door apartment building, though, oh, it's they selling purses out the back of the car, huh, <laughs> huh, Cheryl? <laughs> Go on to the bus. <laughs> Where are they selling purses? Was was she selling purses? Yeah, it's out there like oh. that. <laughs> Bed spreads and all kind of stuff. <laughs> and so, but they be over there getting high, doing drugs, and all this kind of stuff over there. And uh, one night, bang, 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 bang. It was like hit the floor immediately. And then the next morning I went out. I went out the next day. Well, the police came and all of that stuff, you know. I'm like, I ain't going outside. I wasn't afraid or anything like that. But the next day I went out to my car, and there was a bullet print in my car. It wasn't a decal bullet print. It was the original, because you know some. You know you can go buy them little decals and stick them on your car and make it look like you. You know somebody shot at your car. <laughs> it was the real deal. And uh, but that night there was no. I didn't have any fear. He said, "Don't be afraid." I gave you the illustration. Talked to you a couple of weeks back about the earthquake. And God, how God began to deal with me concerning fear. And you can't, you can't allow even the fear of death to drive you and compel you. If, you. if you have not faced that as a reality of life, you have to face that as a believer. Because you have to then teach your children and your children's children how to act and believe and understand when death occurs around you and in your family. How to prepare yourself for it. So that you don't, because some people are, you know, having done a lot of funerals, you know, and I've de delivered several, lots of death notices where I work at and things like that. People, some people, if you don't have that foundation of the word, foundation of trusting in God, a foundation of understanding that I made Jesus the Lord of my life. When death comes knocking at your door, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond? when death comes knocking. See, death comes knocking in different ways. Death of a relationship. Not just physical death or someone dying in your family. What about all the other things where death has occurred around you? How did you handle that grief? Because we all experience a form of grief when something, like for instance, if my wife, if she gets mad at me, you don't get mad at me, do you? Okay, we're going to keep talking. Let me keep <laughs> looking straight. Okay. <laughs> okay. If there's, a, if there's a breakup in a relationship, there's a form of grief that occurs. It's just like as if something died. When my dog died, I cried like a baby. Because he, he was sick, had diabetes, and I went to bed one night. Next morning, got up, he was gone. Right Didn't there you the sit floor. up there with him for a while? For a while, yeah, I did. 
Oh, yeah, I do get mad at him every now and then, but I'm okay. <laughs> so in situations where there is a death, where death occurs, we experience a form of grief. He says, what did he say? Um, you should not be afraid of the terror at night. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness. He says, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. It's all around you, 24-7, waiting on you. Just waiting. It's just sitting there waiting for you. He says, you ain't got to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. I refuse to be afraid. Some people are afraid to come and speak up in public afraid to come and say what God has done in their life. But they say public speaking is one of the greatest fears that a lot of people have. To speak publicly, they'd rather be burned to death than have to speak publicly. There's a survey that, that measured that. So I'm not making that up. You can look it up if you want to. But people are afraid. Fear grips them, gets a hold of them. So you got to learn how to overcome the fear. It's the fear of something that it's unknown. Some people are, are what was that? Oh, we were watching something. Oh, we were watching a program, a movie. You know me, I like watching movies. And so we were watching this other movie, and they were talking about these things that people are afraid of. You could be afraid of fear. I have fear of fear. I was like, wow. Okay, so seven, verse 7. A thousand may fall by your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Why? Because he's provided safety for you. It shall not come near you. But if it does come near you, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous one. You have an advocate there who's right there with you, pleading your case, believing that you're going to be strong, believing that you're going to overcome, believing that you will walk victorious in this thing. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus, our advocate, the one called to our side by the Holy Spirit, is there to assist us, assist us to live this victorious, overcoming life. He's there only to assist us. We still have to do it. He's there as an assistant. An assistant is there who can help you do what you got to do. You can pass things on to the assistant, but you ultimately are held responsible. He says, a thousand may fall by your side, 10,000 to right hands shall not come near me. It's not going to come near you. Amen. Coronavirus might come knocking at the door. It may even enter in, but guess what? It, I will not fall in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me put a stick of pen right there because I, I always like to bring a, a, a place of balance to a statement like what I just said. By faith, I am declaring it won't take me out. By faith, I declare that. Why? Because I have the victory anyway. Why do I say I have the victory? I have the victory because of who I am in Christ Jesus. That thing might come knocking at the door, and sickness and disease might come and attack, and it might overtake my body, and I die. And guess what? If I die, I'm going to be with Jesus. I still win. That's, so in the meantime, what do I do? My fight is not from a position of loss. My fight is from a position of victory. I already win. Amen. That's the mindset that you have to maintain when it comes to building, advancing, and manifesting God's kingdom in your life. That's a perspective. I look at that perspective and I always say, I'm a winner. Bill's up to here. I'm a winner in the name of Jesus. Bill's up to here. Can't pay this bill. Can't pay that bill. I'm st I'm still a winner. Amen. Uh, uh, bill collector calling my house. You guys think old pastor don't have bill collector calling his house? Oh, he got real quiet on that one, huh? <laughs> you see, a lot of times we think, oh, he the pastor. Things don't happen to the pastor. It's all good. I go to the grocery store. They charge me the same amount of bread. How much bread costs? I I got to pay that same amount. I I don't get the pastor discount going to the grocery store and they say oh you're a pastor okay here's your pastor discount no I don't get the discount at the gasoline station when I go to Costco to get gasoline guess what I pay the same price like everybody else does 
I told my family when these gas prices started going to the roof, I said, you better go fill up at half a tank. At least that way it won't feel like it's as much. You're still paying the same amount. It's just not going to feel like it's as much. Go get your tank filled up when you reach halfway down. That's how you plan. That's how you do things that you need to do in order to stay strong when you, these things start coming around you. And then also what I think about, God says, when having to done all, make sure you do all. So in reference to when we were talking about the pandemic and the coronavirus and stuff like that, I went and got my little shot. Thank you, Peggy, for encouraging me to do that. So the first vaccine, second vaccine, when they had the booster shots, I ran and got that. Then they came out with another booster shot. I ran and got that. Having to done all, I'm going to do all. And I'm praying through the whole thing, constantly giving God the glory. And why? Because I believe God. I put my trust. I'm not putting my trust in the vaccine. I put my trust in God. God, I'm trusting you that you give these doctors and this medication, whatever's in it, that it can help me in the name of Jesus. That's where my faith goes. And that's what I pray over this stuff. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't just take that shot. You better pray over that shot yeah. or whatever. It's like, well, I ain't, getting, I ain't gonna get the shot. Okay, you better pray over that too. <laughs> you better pray and ask God, God, am I not supposed to take this shot? See, a lot of times we just decide, I ain't doing it. And didn't consult God, didn't ask God. God didn't say, don't take it. Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. Haven't we seen that? Thousands of people dying, falling. It shall not come near you. Amen. So you got to maintain that. So when you go home and you get to your house today or you wherever you go today and you start seeing things falling around, you say, no, 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 no. Nope. Anybody seen that movie? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> if you saw the movie, you understand the joke. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 not here, not here. I'm not taking that here. Not, not here. Amen. Not over you. Because the devil going to come knocking. Maybe that's the spiritual connection of that movie. He going to come knocking at your door. Nope, not here. I'm not taking that package. And it shall not come to you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Ooh. The reward of the wicked. That's almost like an oxymoron. I said something like that last week. Verse 9. He, okay, my time is getting low. Okay, because you have made, because, here's another because. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. He said, no evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. So you understand that I'm not saying I apply the blood because of any strength in me that's blocking this, uh, these pestilence and stuff from coming near my door. I'm saying it because that's what God says. Amen. That's what he said. I didn't write this. He wrote it. He said, it shall not come near your dwelling. That's your house or your, this house. This is a dwelling. This is a dwelling. This is a dwelling for my spirit. It should not come near your dwelling. It means your house or even your physical house. So that means everybody in your house is protected because of you. Glory. Your kids, your children, and your children's children are protected because of the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So when we pray over our children, pray over our family, pray over this congregation. Those of you that have been here, those that are watching, those that have been a part, we constantly pray and believe in God for God's favor to show up in your life, God's blessings to show up in your life. That's what Cheryl said at the beginning, these blessings to show up in your life. Where am I at? Verse. Oh. Well, actually, Ten. I went back to 8. Okay. Only with their eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes. So let me help you to get a little more understanding on that one. Don't go out, something happened, I'm going to go get revenge. I'm going to go get them back. No, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. God does not need your help to go handle a situation. You gave that situation to God, leave it in God's hands. He will do a better job at it. It may look like somebody that did something negative to you, just prospering. You don't know what really is going on. 
there's good prosperity and there's bad prosperity. You don't know what's going on in that person's life, in their body, in their thinking. Yes, they may be wicked. You leave it with God. You stop trying to handle that. Amen to that. Because he said, just look and see. All you're going to do is look and see. Or you just sitting there. You'd be like, ooh. You know, somebody trying to do you in. Somebody trying to uh, block you from getting that promotion. Trying to block you, interfere with you being able to ad advance in a particular area. Or they coming around all in your space, making you feel all uncomfortable and stuff like that. It's like, oh, no, you start casting that. He say, Father, I cast the care of that on you. God, I put my trust in you. He says, e e a thousand may fall, but my say, he says, even these nor pestilence, people coming around you, people can act like people, people can act like pestilence. And you better know how to use the authority of the power of the blood and the power of God walking in that. So when they start coming, knocking at your door, trying to interfere and block you from getting that promotion, block you from getting that whatever, whatever that is for you, you got to say, no, 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 I find that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, no. I'm not receiving that. And you, and you keep on doing your job, doing what you're supposed to do, and next thing you know, uh, God start heaping coals of fire on somebody's head. Do something nice. Bring them some donuts. Yeah. And <laughs> don't gloat when that happens. When you see that happening, don't gloat. Uh -huh. It's like, <laughs> <told> <laughs> no. Look at what God did for you. God's going to be like, boy, you better sit down somewhere and stop tripping. <laughs> okay? All right. Listen, we're going to do a communion right now. Okay. So hopefully you got your communion elements. If you didn't, raise your hand. We can provide you with some. Those of you that are watching, uh, we're going to do communion right now. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me turn there right quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the passage that we use with regards to communion, verse 23 through 27. This is Paul talking to the church of Corinth, and he's giving some instruction concerning communion. And uh, one of the things that's very important concerning communion is fellowship. That's what it means to commune, and fellowship means to, to flow together. Now, you can't flow together with something or somebody if you don't first know them. So this is communion, so hopefully everybody in here knows the Lord. That means they've made Jesus the Lord of their life, okay? That's important to understand that. Now, what do we, what, why do we do this every month? We do this as a memorial. We do this as a celebration. We do this to remember God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, what they have done for us and what they have provided for us. So we have, because of what Jesus did when he died in his life, death, burial, resurrection, and the promise of his return, we receive this juice and we receive this bread as a memorial event. Just as if we went to the grave site of one of your loved ones to remember them, to remember the good things to remember what has been provided to us because of their life and what they gave to us. This is, this is a cultural experience that we do. The Taj Mahal, the, uh, uh, the Memorial Wall, uh, um, I, I think it's, I want to say Vietnam Memorial Wall. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Is that it? Okay. The okay, thank you. The, these places where they've inscribed, or, or the World Trade Towers, the memorial that they have there with the waterfall there in New York City, okay? Those are all places of a memorial. It's a place of remembrance. So when we receive this bread and we receive this juice, this is our place of remembrance, to remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And that he shed his blood to remit our sins away from us. So when we eat the bread, we're saying that the same life-giving force, when we drink the juice, we're saying that the life-giving force that flows through Christ, we declare flows through us. How? By faith and faith alone. I didn't finish what I was going to say earlier. I got to make sure I wrap that point up. By faith and faith alone. So if I say I'm not going to die, I'm saying that by faith. Because I know people 
that say, I'm believing God, I'm healed in Jesus' name. And guess what? They died. Well, does that mean that their faith didn't work? Or does that mean that they... No, it means that there, there could be some other mitigating circumstances that made this body, this shell, become subject to the sickness, subject to the disease, subject to what's going on. Does that stop my, my stand of faith? No. Because my faith is because of what I believe in my heart and I say it out my mouth. Now, in Jesus' name, we don't have that kind of miraculous power where we can just heal people. I don't have that kind of power. The only one who has that kind of power is the Spirit of God. And that's as he chooses and as he wills. I don't will that. And so we have to, by faith, receive this bread and receive this juice for the remission of our sin and as a remembrance of what God has done in our life. So we're gonna, I'm going to read the passage. We're going to take the bread first. Hold on to it. Don't eat it yet because I want to pray over it first. And I want to read the passage of scripture that's connected to it as well. So those of you that are watching, make sure that you have your bread right now. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the uh, 23rd and 24th verse, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. So because his body was broken, ours does not have to be. He said that's why his body was broken for you, for healing, for your deliverance, for your safety, for your soundness, for your preservation, for your prosperity, everything that we're talking about concerning our salvation. He says, it's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we remember what you have done for us that your body was broken for us so that we can be healed and whole in every area of our lives so that we can be victorious. Thank you, Father God, that you provided a means and a way so that we can experience your favor, your abundance, your blessings and prosperity in our lives. And by faith, I declare everybody in this room and anyone listening under the sound of my voice that they are healed and whole that they are victorious in every area of life. I call them blessed right now. I call them whole and complete right now. And we thank you, Father, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat together. Okay, thanks. Verse 25 says, In the same manner, that means in the same means, in the same manner. He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. We have a new covenant, everybody. Amen. Built upon better promises. This is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in what? Remembrance of me. We are remembering Jesus. That his blood was sacrificed to remit your sins. So if you don't have the, if they've been taken care of, that means God sees you as righteous. God sees you holy. God sees you sanctified. God sees you set free from all the hurt that you may have experienced. The abuse, the mental anguish, the stuff we have put ourselves through. God says, I see you whole and complete. So by faith, I would like you to release those things. Anything that's been holding you back, your, your, what you can do and what you can't do and what the world has told you about who you are, no, not anymore. So you release those things when we receive this juice today. Release it all by faith. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this juice. And as this juice goes into our bodies, it helps us to not allow this pain of this world to interfere with our ability to stand in you. We are victorious because of who you are and what you have and what you do in our lives. And we receive this juice with thanksgiving and prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's drink together.
Right now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you concerning healing. We'll have somebody come by and pick those up from you in just one second. Right in the midst of communion, this is very important. This is a very good time to pray. I'm not going to pray and lay hands. I don't feel comfortable doing that as of yet. I will one day. In Jesus' name, I'll get back to doing that. But I want to let you know that you're, I agree with you in faith and in prayer that you are the healed ones right now in the name of Jesus. Like I was saying in the communion, if you have had these, these nagging thoughts, these nagging mindsets, this old way of thinking of how, you know, we've, how we treat ourselves or how you've been treated, and maybe you've been abandoned, maybe you have been whatever it is, I want you to re I'm going to pray, and I want you to release that today in the name of Jesus. Just release it. And I'm going to give you. We're going to. I'm going to give you a point of contact to be able to release. As soon as we finish picking up these cups from you, okay? So, and I'm going. So, uh, going to believe God with you for a release right now. Whatever it is, whatever's been holding you back, whatever's been blocking you, whatever's whatever has been something that you've allowed to stop you from being able to pursue the things of God like you want to. I'm going to pray that those things be released right now. All right. So, Father, in the name, just okay. So, as a point of contact, I want you to lay your hands on your body. Take your hands, lay your lay your hands on your heart, lay your hands on your head, lay your hands on your neck, or whatever it is that's that your your pancreas, you know, your diabetes is messing with you. Whatever whatever it is, heart conditions messing with you, arthritis messing with you. Okay, we want we want to take authority over that. Migraine headaches, you know, issues going on in your body, worries. Uh, we're going to release those things today right now by the authority of the name of Jesus. Father, your word tells us to lay hands on the sick. We're laying hands vicariously with one another. We're laying hands on ourselves. And I'm praying the prayer of faith, Father, in Jesus' name for your people, that they are healed and whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And as a point of contact, we release right now anything that has been blocking and hindering us from being able to experience the fullness of of your favor, the fullness of your blessings because of the covenant that we have in you. So by faith, we declare that we are set free from the power of darkness, that we're translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. Thank you, Father God, for working in the heart, mind, and souls of your people right now. And by faith, we release failures, disappointments, issues that we've carried. We release it, just release it by faith. Just release it. See it written down on a ball of piece of paper and ball it up and throw it in the trash. If that's what you got to do. Be released from it right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, you may have grown up in a home. Maybe you grew up in a home where something wasn't quite right. You've been carrying that weight, carrying the sin of that weight on you all these years. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Fears, worries unforgiveness let it go right now in the name of Jesus because this is going to carry on throughout throughout today for you because you're going to start thinking up all these different things just release them when they start coming up just begin to release them father and just say it father I release that in the name of Jesus I release that hurt in the name of Jesus I release that fear in the name of Jesus I release it why because you said you give your angels charge over me he said, I, if I make your, my place in you, my dwelling place, that nothing's going to hurt me. No fear, not even the fear of death. Whatever you've been carrying, let it go. Release it in the name of Jesus. All right, we'll be back here next time. For those of you that are here in the sanctuary, just give me one second. We're going to get ready to close out the, uh, the broadcast. Um, we want to let you know that you're loved and appreciated. We thank God for you. Thank you for joining us for those that are streaming. Uh, we do appreciate you. Come on out, fellowship with us. You know where we're located, 3465 West Craig Road, Sweet B as in Boy, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89032. We'll be back here streaming. I'll be back up ministering on Wednesday for the Bible study. Uh, Wednesday, going to be starting. I'm going uh, <clears throat> to do a six-week teaching on leadership, the leadership clinic. And so I want to invite you to tune in on for the leadership clinic on Wednesday nights at 7 30 p.m. streaming only and then we'll be back here next Sunday uh, here live starting at 10 o'clock and we you know begin with some music at 9 30 and uh, come on out fellowship with us 
Um, we want to thank you for those of you that are watching and those that are here in the sanctuary. We love and appreciate you, and we thank God for you. And we believe for God's best and God's favor to show up in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. And Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, praise God. So, if, uh, all right. So, y'all have a good day that are watching. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen. We have any visitors that are here for the very first time? First time visitors? Just raise your hand. We don't want you to. All right. Thank you very much for coming out. We do appreciate you. We thank God for you. Hopefully you received a visitor card. We'll, if not, we'll make sure that we get one. It's not that we, I'm not going to be like some of these stalkers, people here calling folks, hounding folks. No. If you receive something today, you know, come on back, fellowship with us. If you, you know, if you got something out of the teaching, all right? Uh, we love and appreciate you. We thank God for you. Anytime that our doors are open, um, you're always welcome to come and fellowship with us. We thank God for you. Thank you for coming and being willing to be a part of the service today. You're loved and appreciated. All right. We're going to do last couple of things, and then we'll be out of here. Um, we're going to receive our offer.